This is the first tutorial in a series over Reaper's Preferences settings, which a special playlist is dedicated to. In this video, we analyze the settings in general section. If you think this type of tutorial is useful for you, write it down in the comments. The installation I have here of Reaper is the default one to which I only change the transport bar for personal taste. Control P or Options Preferences. Let's see the general section. The first settings is the drop down menu for the language, which by default is English. With multiple languages installed, Reaper can be asked to show a choice menu upon startup, so when Reaper starts, it asks you which language to use. To download the language pack, just click on this link. The browser opens to the description page. Here we see only three languages, but on Reaper Stash, there are several other ones. I download the Russian. Here I have already downloaded it for tests before the tutorial. It is automatically installed by simply clicking on it. I select the option to ask for the language at startup. Reaper must be restarted. And when restarting, it asks which language to start with. I can choose whether to use Russian or English. I choose Russian and you see that all menus are now translated into Russian with Cyrillic notation. For obvious reasons, I'm going back to English now. Import and export configuration are used when you want to save the DAO configuration for safety, or transfer the Reaper installation to another machine, or send part of the settings from one machine to another. I do an export so you can see how it works. Click on Export. You can export the basic configuration for its own sake, as well as all or part of the other settings such as the themes, plugin presets, effect chains, JSFX, projects and their templates, sliders and their key maps, menus and toolbars, actions and bindings, menus, menu sets, and so on. What do you want? Click on Save. Reaper saves everything in a configuration file. Suppose you want to export everything by clicking on Save. A file with the extension Reaper Config Zip is created. And this is the file that must be saved on the NAS or imported to another machine. Here you see that Reaper has saved the configuration that indicated that file. I go to the Reaper configurations folder and here is the file. When you import it, just click on import. You choose the file. Reaper warns you that it needs to be restarted, so following the instructions, Reaper restarts. I choose the English language and I have the configuration loaded. In this section, Undo settings, we have everything related to Undo and Redo. Starting from the memory used and then what is included in the Undo. By default are only items, but you can include the tracks, the envelopes, the tempo, which is already the default and even the position of the cursor. Let's see an example. I create three tracks and I create items. I select the item several times and in executing the undo, so Ctrl Z, you see that it goes back with the selection. If I select the items and then the tracks, because I have not checked the track box, the undo goes backwards only with the items. But by checking track and then apply and repeating the selection operation and then undo, it also performs the reverse on the track selection. By activating this option, when you approach the cap of the available memory, the order's undo is deleted from the list and the action just performed is stored. This older option saves the whole undo history in an undo RPP file. By default, it isn't checked. I checked it myself. While this other box is checked by default and allows you to reload this file when the project is loaded. It means that you can do all the operations you want when you save the project, a file with the undo history is generated. I close and reopen the project. 
In another though, everything evolved below the button on the Reaper. Indeed, in the project directory, which here is the default one, because as I said, it is an installation from scratch and I have not proceeded to set it as the production one, there is the undo RPP file. So by reopening the project, this history is loaded into the project and if you want to undo on operations made perhaps the day before, it is possible because it is all there. The other option also saves the path for the redo, but they require a lot of RAM. So depending on what machine you have, you can choose whether to use these options or not. Below is the Reaper startup window. There are several choices that are considered when starting Reaper. For example, whether to load the last project up. You know that Reaper can open several projects at the same time and different tabs. So when you close it and reopen it, he loads the last tab you opened. This order selection is used to load a new project ignoring and a default template. If you have set one and you can see it from this tab. If you haven't set it, it obviously ignores it regardless or open a new project, but this time based on the full template. Or just open a prompt. A window where you are asked what to open and how. Let's see an example. I close Reaper and save the sample project. Now I reopen it and the menu also opens, which is the prompt asking what to open and how to continue. Whether to open the last project worked on, whether to open the third tab as the last one of the active project on which I worked, or a new project but not based on any default template, a project but with a default template and below one of recent projects. I remind you that if you have not set a default template, Reaper still opens the screen you see here without any track and with only the master channel to give you the possibility to work. Below are several boxes checked by default that you can disable anyway. The first activates the check for the presence of new versions of Reaper when it starts. I recommend leaving it active, since Reaper versions are frequent and bugs are solved in a very short time compared to any other software house in the world. Otherwise, you should remember to do a manual check by going to Help and clicking on Check for new versions. Creates a tab of a project when importing a media file from the Explorer Finder with the right click. Or load the file appending it to the previous one on the selected track in the same project. It shows the splash screen at the startup. When you start Reaper, you see the animated logo. You can avoid showing it, I will show you. Removing the tick and restarting Reaper, the logo is no longer shown. Putting everything back, here is the splash screen that is shown. It checks for multiple instances at launch. It means that Reaper checks if there are any other Reaper opened. By removing the tick, it is possible to open different instances of Reaper, each one with different projects open internally in tabs or running at the same time. By checking it, however, only one instance can be opened. So I leave it this Reaper open and open several other ones. Here are four Reapers open. As mentioned, for each opened Reaper, you can have one or more opened projects. Below is another important figure. It is the maximum number of projects you see in the list of recent projects. Set it as you like. If you also check this box in front of the path, it shows you the name of the file to make it easier to read. So in recent projects, you have the path and the name of the project. When unchecking the box and reopening it, the name of the project does not appear, but appears after the path. More difficult to read on the fly. This number is usually left at null, as the today's computers have a lot of memory. But if your PC is dated, at least 20 years old, you can set this number to tell Reaper that if it exceeds a certain memory usage when you're up. This button clears the list of recent projects. This button provides access to further settings on the user interface and other system tweaks. 
For example, you can upload your logo as a splash screen instead of Reaper's default. There are other settings concerning the size of the windows or the scale of the various graphic elements to have them smaller or larger, depending on the needs. This box allows you to keep the snap window open. This order allows you to accept keyboard commands while editing with the mouse. In advanced system and multiprocessing tweaks, you have the possibility to limit the number of CPUs used by Reaper or to specify which ones it should use, if 1, 4 and 7, or all, or 0, 1, 2 and 3, and the other ones managed by the system. This box, if checked, prevents the operating system from relocating threads on different CPUs. The letter sets the size occupied by the working processes from a minimum to a maximum megabyte. If you don't know exactly what you are doing, leave the default settings. Finally, there are two drop-down menus. The first deals with the mode of positioning of the Reaper window. When you place the elements in Reaper and close it, upon reopening, these elements can be positioned as left last time, which is by default, or center them on the screen, or center them on the mouse cursor, and ultimately, let the operating system do it. The drop-down below deals with the settings of high-resolution monitors per inch IDPI for Windows system from 7 onwards and multi-monitor systems. As mentioned, if you think it's useful, share the video, because it can also be useful to other people and write it in the comments. Maybe why not? Pay me a drink. Below in the description the link, and please consider also to become my Patreon. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching.